Jean-Jacques Subrena, now a member of civil society, but also a member of the board of ICANN, uh, speaking here in a private capacity. I would like to make a, pro a proposal. I submit to this forum for transmittal to the next IGF, if uh, this forum thinks it's worthwhile, proposal for um, a movement or perhaps uh, uh, a sort of international uh, initiative which could be called ILFP, Internet Liberties and Freedom from Predation or Predatory Practices. Amongst all the things which have been mentioned, uh, I would like to take up something <laughs> something that uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Lau mentioned in the second day in the morning. He put a very valid question and I'm not confident that the proper answer or complete answer w to, was given to him. Mr. Lau asked specifically in combating predatory or cybercrime practices what is the most uh, the weakest link in combating this I remember that, and I'm not sure that you got the answer. So I would like to take an analogy from uh, public policy and from multilateral uh, experience to submit to you, Mr. Lau. Uh, say, for instance, uh, 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 disarmament policy. It is only efficient if three conditions are met. First of all, that it is inclusive. That means that people sign up and are really members and parties to that. The second is that the regime or the process has to be verifiable throughout the chain. And the third element is that it must be subject to sanctions. And that is often the breaking point or the weak point. Now, I would suggest that because uh, the things we are talking about, especially cyber criminality, uh, is taking up a huge amount of resources. For, uh, uh, for instance, one mentioned that spam accounts for about 80% of traffic today. That is intolerable, especially in, in the context that uh, Jonathan Charles was mentioning earlier today, which is a crisis. It's a crisis not only for the financial institutions. Underlying that is a much deeper crisis of resources, energy, etc. So I think it is all the more our duty to address that in the larger uh, picture of resources and economy. Now, to be uh, practical, I would suggest that if such a proposal were to be taken up in uh, Cairo next year, it would have to look at the following points. The idea is to, or would be, to create or to suggest some sort of overall global code of conduct. Um, pieces exist, in fact very good uh, pieces exist whether from UNESCO, Council of Europe, the ongoing work in ITU is very valid but I think that each of this has a great contribution but perhaps not yet the global contribution ITU for instance is government centered uh, understandably, so is UNESCO, etc. Council of Europe I heard some remarks from friends from other continents that, yes, of course, but we're not Europeans. So in a way, they don't entirely subscribe, not to the ideas, but to the fact that it has a label which says Council of Europe. So we have to get over that. But I think the idea would be to establish, and where else than IGF, a platform of agreed principles which could be subscribed to on a voluntary basis not only by governments, but also by industrial groups, by NGOs, by representatives of civil society, etc. Now, I come back to, and that's my last point, the problem of sanctions. As I mentioned uh, in my answer to Mr. Lau, the weak point is generally sanctions, which are non-operative. I think the great thing about internet is that it is shifting the notion of responsibility, but also the notion of influence away from government only to the global view and uh, public, uh, the public view, the public uh, perception is an element of reputation and influence. So I would suggest that 
for lack of a proper system of sanctions in the system I'm suggesting, we should have um, a system of scoreboards where there would be a sort of rating which could be submitted to the public appraisal. Because ultimately, I believe that now we are in a world not only of sanctions because influence is more through example than through force. 